Hello friends, I'm going to post edit this in at the start of the video. So I recorded this video yesterday, 11th of February. And then I went to bed last night, and what do I see in my YouTube recommended? But a video by a guy called LeBun, which you'll be seeing on the screen. So he had the same idea that I had in this video, and he did it like five days before me, but I didn't see it until after I edited. I checked his channel out, he does a lot of really cool stuff, I really like the type of videos he goes for. If you like my channel, you probably like his channel, so shout out to him for having this idea before me. Go check out his channel, link will be in the description, really really cool YouTuber. And luckily, the way that I went about the method is different to the way he did, so it's different enough. Anyway, shout out to LeBun, and enjoy the video. The behemoth has been all the rage since Unicorn Pack came out. What's that, a pet that can get to 100 100? And many people have used it in Arena, and many people have made videos with the usual scaling methods. However, I wanted to cook up a run, not with shop scaling, but trying to get to the 100 100 mark with in battle scaling. And here's what I cooked up. Hello friends, let me show you the pack that this happened on in case you want to pause and have a look or use it yourself. But the main pets involved, I'll just explain it as they come up. Let's play nice and fast. Yeah, so the behemoth. I remember on launch day finding out that a pet could get to 100, 100. It was sort of like a whoa moment. Like, that's kind of insane. But my interest after that fell off. This is actually the first... Trying for this build was the first time I'd ever actually used it. Because, like, what interests me in this game is silly little mechanics. <laughs> and just sort of messing around with them. Uh, so the idea of like actually using the behemoth as a legitimate like I'm going for wins thing just not like to me not interesting But then event then I just had the thought wait a second. What if I combine it with uh, the armadillo? And when other pets are hitting the 50 cap it just keeps going and that's how, that's where this idea spawned from We get the wavern which we know is just so good for level ups. I went away from using the wavern and now I'm really back on it and the way my strategy at this time is that I need a bunch of tier 4 level ups. There's like two tier 4 pets I really want to hit. Uh, we see another person running the warg. Uh, and really, really unfortunate to get a draw there. So I take pig, I'm just thinking gold. And yeah, you see I just want to maximize the gold that I have on turn 5. My team sucks right now, it's a horrendous team. If you, you rolled up on me in the arena, you'd probably kick my butt and that's okay. This guy has somehow managed to outdo me and has made a worse team. He was stoked selling. Unusual, to say the least. Let's take our level. Cyclops. Busted unit, but I sort of needed to use it. Better fish keeps me strong. I think I fell into a bad habit of not taking the better fish enough. Uh, when I watched, when I like edited some of my recent runs, I'm like, I probably should just take it more for tempo. Unfortunately, we have a warg cheeser. Um, and look, anyone that's played customs recently, it's just wargs, and it's vampire bats, and it's, uh, level up builds, people thinking, <laughs> people just spamming it, man. Uh, I say as I'm trying to run 100-100 behemoth. We get our level, and my team is really, really, really weak. Probably too weak. His... Uh, what's it called? His Mandrake completely ruins me here. And well played to him. I'm a, I'm an, a Mandrake appreciator. We hit the Armadillo, so you know it's going to give all pets bad health at the start. And I decided to go ahead, like, why don't I try scaling my Armadillo? It's not crucial, but maybe it'll work. And I haven't found, like, the armadillo is obviously a key unit, and there's another component we really need. A custom-only pet that I, like, have not seen anybody else using. And probably for valid reason, it's not that crash hot. Here we have the classic armadillo fights that take 19 years. Even spin up, and we, and we win. Let's see if we can find the pet we need. Level the clop. And out of these options, we take Monkey, and there it is, the Hippocampus. So we'll talk about it next round. It synergizes well with the Armadillo, but it's just inherently not that good. That Skunk almost destroys me, but we're good. Okay, so now let's look at the Hippocampus. Very interesting. I originally, like before I thought about the Behemoth, I was just going to make a Hippocampus video, and I was going to call it Scalar Steroids. So anytime any pet gains health in any capacity, 
the hippocampus will add an additional attack. So it's like if I bought this peach, boom, it would also get attack. Um, in it comes. And that doubles in battle. Why are we going slow? I'm sorry. So I just want my levels. We're not getting them. And you can see my team is horrendous. My team is so bad. This guy's team is very interesting. But actually, I just get destroyed. Really creative team. I give props to him. I go to one health. I get my level. Do we get the behemoth? We do, actually. So now, again, I hadn't used the behemoth much. It was quite exciting. Do we get another one? We don't, but a tiger will go well with the armadillo. The reason that this build is not that good is because you end up having no in-battle abilities other than the armadillo, which also helps the other team. Really, really cool to see a Cerebrus team. Um, I actually kind of got inspired that I might look to do a Cerebrus team. Like, there are just certain pets, such as the Hippocampus or Cerebrus. The, the pets are so insane in this... Uh, the pets are so, so wild in the unicorn pack that... Like, really fun pets are falling through the cracks. But God knows, at the moment in customs, you can't really have fun. By the way, pancakes will also... Anything that gives stats will trigger... The uh, hippocampus, as you can see, it's working in conjunction with the monkey. We versus a warg team. And it's going to do all its hits, but the armadillo has set us up very well. And we're going to roll through here. I love that there's, there's beautiful math coming up here on the armadillo. Stunning. Fantastic. And now we've sort of stayed alive long enough that I'm starting to believe. Love to see that. We're getting our levels. And that... The Parrot Hippocampus has a really interesting interaction, actually. Uh, you'll see it. I'll, I'll slow it down when it happens. Another Warg team. And a Nessie. But we're big enough. So check this interaction out. Uh, if, if, if I bring the Parrot in this round. I actually don't. Okay, hold that. Sorry to leave you in suspense, gentlemen. And ladies... So the behemoth cracks the 50 attack, and then in battle, you see all the health goes, 82. And then the hippocampus goes, and we get it up to absolutely ludicrous numbers. We roll their team. I was kind of scared at a, like, at a cursory glance here, but we make it through. I really want to show you this parrot interaction. I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, are we bringing it in? On goes the pancakes. We are. So watch, the parrot... Copies the hippocampus. Let me slow it down for this. Oh, you're actually not going to say it. Okay, let's pretend the monkey was still on the team. What would happen is that the parrot would copy the hippocampus. And then the monkey would go. And then the parrot would actually act as a hippocampus in the shop phase. Like, you see that happen with a few pets, but I thought it was really cool. See? Oh, there! You know, sometimes if you just play, like let the clip roll, Rev, you'll find where you need to go. In comes all the health. Perfect example here. Like, you see his units cap at 50, and my behemoth just keeps on climbing, baby. Bad math. But we're okay. We get the classic armadillo slow things. So, yeah, <laughs> this is where the, the run gets really interesting from here. So, obviously, like... You probably... That pepper, right? No use putting it on the behemoth, right? Like, what's the point? What's the point of doing that? A melon? Maybe you put a melon on. But decide to pepper my... Why did I not pepper the armadillo? I hear you asking. I don't have a good answer to that. Misplay, misplay, misplay. We enter turn 15. Let's see how the behemoth goes. I mean, tiger, level 2 tiger, level 3 armadillo. So it starts at 72.50. Ooh, very close to 100-100. We completely roll. And in comes... <laughs> the most ridiculous final round you'll probably see. Again, now I make the... Now I put the pepper on the armadillo. Does, why would you... Why would you ever put a pepper on your behemoth, right? And I gotta be honest. I was actually thinking about putting the... Parrot behind the behemoth at some point. If it's scaled enough. <sighs> 
Can you actually believe that? We lose to a fellow... Well, we almost hit 100-100. We lose to 100-100 behemoth because he had a garlic on it. Because he had a garlic on it. And I can't... Wait, so theoretically, if this was, if, they, if they traded, we get Duke Duke dead. I believe, yeah. So it would be dead, and then it would trade with this. Yeah, yeah. We would have, uh, we would have won, and instead <laughs> we go down. So we didn't get the ten wins, but we did get the behemoth to a hundred attack through some incredible shop scaling. Uh, anyway, I hope you found that interesting because I sure as hell did. Uh, and if you're new, please consider subscribing. And most importantly, have a tremendous day, people. Goodbye. Okay.